everybody, this is a video for writers, authors, script writers, you know, anybody serious about writing, um, how to use Scrivener. I feel Scrivener is the top-notch uh, program to use for someone who wants to actually publish. Um, so let's get started. Right now I'm on the website literatureandlatte.com. This is where Scrivener is found. They have other products like Scapple. Scapple is like a thing to kind of plan out your story. I have it, but I don't use it. Um, everything I do is like in my mind. So, and as I'm writing, the story changes differently. So there's really nothing I got to plan out. Um, but you know, it definitely probably has its uses. Um, I can see how it would. So, but we're not going to look at that. We're going to look at Scribner. So literatureandlatte.com. Um, you know, there's other writing programs. There is people can write on Google Docs. Um, they can write in Microsoft Word, things like that. But from you know, rough draft to, you know, draft to sending to the pub or an editor or um, all the way up to publishing your novel, script, screenplay, whatever, uh, Scrivener's the thing to use. So um, this is the number one uh, tool. There's also other uh, programs too that are like this. Um, uh, so but I don't know. I've used I've used some of them. However, Scrivener has proven to be the best for me, and I feel it will be for you too. So when you're on this website, just go to products, Scrivener. They have this program, uh, cloud based. So what you can do is you can save your work to something like Dropbox or iCloud or something else, and go and open this program on your phone or your tablet and continue writing and you can pick up where you left off from your computer um, it's pretty awesome so um, you would click download or buy now um, I think it's about fifty dollars and it's not like a monthly subscription it's like that that's it so um, it's available on these devices so you have you know iOS um, Windows and um, Mac OS all right, so here it is, and I will show you after you download it, install it, and I'm going to show you how to use it. So um, having said that, we're going to open Scrivener. Here it is. And once you open it, it's going to ask you, you know, what, what are you writing? What is it that you um, are going to be putting together? So you can do all and just look at all this stuff. Um, just a blank thing, uh, fiction. Um, there's novel. This is normally what I use because I'm, I'm writing if you write novels. So this one, a uh, novel with parts, that's the one I normally choose. A short story, so like a novella. And then you have like nonfiction, which is nice. This is for, this This a lot is for when people are in college and they're doing a lot of these sorts of things. Or um, you're writing a nonfiction story. So all good. So um, we're going to go to uh, fiction and we're going to click novel with parts and we're going to click uh, create or you can click open existing um, we're just going to jump to that create it just creates it it's blank um, and that's it so let's go ahead and click on uh, open existing right here and we're just going to grab something I'm going to grab one of my stories here I think it's this one um, yeah let's open that one uh, um, yep, let's update. That means this uh, program updated since the last time I opened that uh, script. So it's opening. Oh, files are recovered. That's good. Okay. There we go. There's all my chapters, all my notes. There we go. Okay. So here's the layout. Let's first go up here to manuscript and open that up. Look, there's a little folder. It says chapter. I have added all these chapters. Okay, and how that works is, let's say I click on this chapters folder right here. So you see all this? See how this is kind of formatted? It gives you like a little preview of what you are working with. Let me spread this all out and take up the whole screen so we can have a good, good look. There we go. Okay, so you have all this. Now, let's say I wanted to add a chapter. Okay, I'm working on a Mac, by the way, but this is universal. So I'm going to right-click this, 
and you could um, totally, um, or sorry, right, right click in, in here and you can click add new text right there. And then you could name it right here, you know, up here you can name it. Um, and then after you do that, it, it's in here and you can click on on the left side here, this left pane. And here's the, you know, what's been written. And then the same thing here, you can come back here, add another one, chapter one. Go over here, it's blank, you start writing. Chapter two, three, you know, so on and so forth. You get the, you get the drill. Let me just minimize that. Now, here's where you can plan stuff out. So you have, like, um, information. <laughs> I didn't write anything. It's all in my head. Um, a lot of stuff. Blank, 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 blank. All right, yeah. But I added these characters. I think I just wanted their names down under the characters list. Um, I have Peter twice. I don't know why. But uh, I only remember one Peter in that story. Um, so then you have all this and you can add the character just so you keep it um, and you don't forget. I know I've written stories where I rename a character in the middle of the book and that is because I forgot what I originally named them, which is silly. Okay, so that that's happened. So this is how you can remember what their names were and you can put information about who they are and I guess what their goals are in the story you're writing. Or maybe you're writing nonfiction and it's about real people and you can take notes about them in here. Okay, places. This is where you can um, put information about places the story goes, how they connect, where they got to. These are just notes for you. This isn't something that's gonna be printed. It's just very convenient and very organized and it helps you organize your story and keep everything straight. Now, front matter is like the format of the book. So these are basically your folders. You, you already see this, um, how it's gonna look, paperback, Manuscript format, this is where you'd send it to like an editor or a publisher. And, you know, ebook format. So if you look here, title page, there it is. Um, wow, there's my phone number right there. I'm gonna have to blur that out. Um, and then title page, you know, it has all this whole note. This is the manuscript uh, stuff. But it does this look with. Uh, code so all of those things don't really show up uh, you got copyright dedication um, that's it okay so then ebook format so this is good because you can drop in a cover that cover has completely changed this is definitely an old uh, print or an old version um, yeah that is definitely not the cover um, so anyways there we go so that's it so let's say your story is totally done and you want to take this to a format that is print and ebook. So to do that, I am going to go to, uh, you can go ahead and click on, on Mac, it's uh, share. Okay, you're gonna click the uh, this button, or it means compile. You're gonna compile it, okay? So on Windows, you'll, I think you literally have a button that says compile. Um, so you're going to click that, and it's going to open up this right here. So right now I have it manuscript, okay? Normally for paperback, you're going to go down here to paperback right here. And I'm going to go through and uh, highlight everything. So I held shift on my keyboard, and I started, I'm going to just uncheck that button. I don't, I don't need that there. Um, that's the folder. Um, it actually won't do anything with that. It can be selected and it doesn't have to be. Um, but I'm just going to go down here. I don't need the pitch or the synopsis because that is something that I wrote up for sending to editor and editor and or my editor and all that. So this is basically the format. It's telling you that at the bottom of the page is the numbering system as to the pages. So you have that format. Um, you can change that um, over here if you'd like. Um, you can change it up here. Um, add front matter. Um, you click this and you go to um, where is template uh, character? Okay, yeah. Um, go up to 
front matter. So the front matter basically says, you know, the title and the author. And then back matter, um, same thing. I don't have that. Um, I don't have anything filled out for that. So um, that is it. And then if you go to um, So there's all the uh, printed stuff. So see how we're compiled for print? You have all these options. And then here, um, you can also do PDF. This is ideal. This is really what you want. PDF is what you want. You go to um, publish this on Amazon, and what happens is they want a PDF copy for a printed version. So you put PDF in there. And I choose this, paperback PDF. Um, Choosing print, I'm not printing it, so I need the PDF file, so this is what I use. A lot of times, editors, or not editors, publishers want this as well. Now, let's go over to uh, ebook. This is EPUB file. You can do this. This is what works on most readers, um, EPUB for like um, iBooks, but this is really important too. For publishing on Amazon, you have Kindle ebook, and that's a Mobi file. Um, so you would click that, and again, we have everything selected here, and you would click on Compile. Now, there's some options here that you can do. So at the top, this is also for print. So you have these tags you can put in. Um, if there's more than one author, you can put those in there. Um, and right now, this is going from the title of my file. So you want to go in and change this. You know, it's just backup. There's no abbreviated title. And then this is, uh, well, you can actually, you can go take out the author, me. Okay, and that's it. And you can add contributors in here if you want, publisher, if you have a publisher, things like that. ISBN, only if you have one. I don't recommend buying one because Amazon assigns you a free one. That would be silly. Okay, so then in settings... You have a couple options here that you can do. This really only has to do with, um, I think, like nonfiction type stuff. A lot of this stuff does. But also this. Let's say it's printed. Change the DPI. You can do 72, but let's say your book has, or what you're publishing, has like good images in it. You definitely want that to be 300. 300 uh, PPI because otherwise they're not going to show up that nice in a printed format. And most printing companies, if there's images in there, want it to be 300 PPI. So that's a high-res uh, thing. So then let's go to here. Um, this is replacement stuff. You'll barely ever have to mess with this. Um, so you set words or phrases um, to be like redacted or something. That depends on like what you're working on. Um, Case-sensitive type stuff. So, um, yeah. And then you have setup cover. So first image in front matter. So this is where you're going to add your cover to your digital copy and your printed copy. So right here is where you do that. Um, and right now it's based on the cover I put in the program already. So I click cover and it puts it there. This is not my cover. It's something different. So and then here we have this generate HTML table of contents. It's doing that for a digital copy. You definitely want this. Um, make sure that's always checked for an ebook. Um, it normally is by default. So then you're good to go. And then after that, you click compile and it wants to know where you're going to save it. And you go from there. So that's kind of a quick little rundown of Scrivener. It's not too hard to use. It's got a lot of bells and whistles. Like anything that you can think of for wanting to publish something is in this program. Uh, it's next to none. I mean, sometimes I use Microsoft Word for certain things, but um, this does everything I need it to, um, more than any other writing program. So there is that, and uh, I hope this uh, has been informative and you're able to use it.